Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. In this episode of Paratech 10, we are moving on to part 10 of Uncle Tony's originated Mission Impossible. That's where we take a stock 318 Mopar engine and with doing no more than removing metal, see how much power we can get. Now this will involve new pistons because the rebore, which is removing metal, is going to involve a bigger hole, which is going to need a piston in it. This actually will be a good thing because the piston design that comes stock with these engines stops way short at the top of the bore and therefore compromises the compression that we can get. Now, let me detail why compression is so important. I don't quite know where I heard it. I want to say Dino Don Nicholson, but hey, I could be wrong on that. It was a long time ago, but what I remember was what was said. And that was, if you don't fill that cylinder very well, you better squeeze what's in there pretty damn hard. What the implication here is that should the cylinder filling not be good, the compression ratio becomes very, very important. In our case, that's just the case. So we've got to go to all the possible lengths to make sure we can get plenty of compression in this engine. So that's what we're going to look at in this issue, right? We're going to look at compression ratio, the shape of the cylinder and deshrouding. So let's have at it. Here is our before and after chambers. Point to note, these two chambers are mirror images of each other. They came from alongside each other. Maybe I should place them around this way because I believe that was the way they were cut. Now then, let's just go through a couple of things here. Swirl comes in through here and on this one goes around that way on this one it comes in through here and it go around that way now i want you to look at these chambers and see how the swirl passes over the spark plug it goes the intake has to come in here up this wall here and over the spark plug now normally on this one here it runs into kind of a brick wall of sort just here this area here could be better scavenged during the overlap period so what i've done here is i've cut the chamber so that this is bold out here right compared with this area here this will allow uh, intake fresh intake charge easier into this area here also it will let the exhaust port scavenge this here easier than it would do in this instance here so that was our goals there and also to make sure that we had unshrouded the valves here and here as good as possible plus you'll note we've skimmed this head to get rid of this area here so now we have a conventional quench well i say conventional but approaching it just here 
Anyway, let's look at the mechanics of how this was all done. Our first move then is to deshroud the exhaust valve. Now I showed you how to deshroud the intake valve on the uh, previous video. That would be part 9 or episode 80. So what we do is we mark out the chamber so that we scribe a line that comes right to the edge of the gasket line, the firing of the gasket line. Then we cut that away and we use the ball to get the through flow area as large as possible. Now this is very important for the exhaust because Initially, the exhaust goes out at supersonic speed and discharge coefficient is not the big issue here, it's area. So for the first 200 thousandths or thereabouts, we need to make sure that we give the uh, exhaust as much area through the gap and into the port so that we have the best blowdown possible. The more effective our blowdown is, the more effective we'll have for having the exhaust processes work in our favour, i.e. not having to open the exhaust valve until the last possible moment and better scavenging. So here we go. Here's what I did for the exhaust. Here's the first step of the chamber done. Cut to the line. Now we're going to blend out this end and this end. So I'll show you what that looks like after it's done. We can see that, that this curve here that's going alongside of the chamber is blended smoothly into the original chamber here. Now here, a bit more extensive metal removal, right? What we've got to do is create a flat plane going up the side here relative to the valve. In other words, this is flat with the valve top there. You'll see why that is when the head skimmed and we've got a quench area here, right? So now the deal is I've got to do the difficult bit and that is just cut the throat of the exhaust valve ready so that we can do what I call an area rule with a flow ball. Here's a view looking down the exhaust port. What we're going to do is dress this area here so that we're going to give, we're going to dress this part here so we're going to give the maximum area as the valve opens so that it has the fastest capability of dumping that exhaust. Now remember, when the flow is supersonic, it's the area that counts, not the flow figures. The goal here is to dress the uh, intersection of the valve seat with the valve throat so that you're left with the seat about a sixteenth of an inch wide. Set the valve height so you can just pull the ball through here in an unshrouded area. Right now, with it in that position, see if it will thread through into the throat of the valve. Right? Let's move slightly. Right, there we go. Now, you need to be able to do that all the way around. Right, well, it's just a tad more off just here. So that's what we'll do now. We'll do that, actually, we'll do that when we polish the chamber right because that's going to be close to what we need it's close to what we need now and polishing or rather disking it with a 40 or 80 grit uh, disc will clear it here's what the chamber looks like after roughing out notice how I've 
streamline this pocket that was here so that gases can flow in and out easy. Be, it'll be easier to see this after it's finished. Right, so now it's time for going over with the emery pad and cleaning it up with the 40 and 80 grit. Well, here's the chamber pretty much finished, except for the final polish when no, all the seats are cut and things like this. Notice how I've softened up this well around the spark plug here so air can come in easier over here and into this area here for ignition. Also, to get it out, imagine the pistons up to top dead center and we're getting a suction from the exhaust scavenging so it will get out easier. So it'll scavenge this area here and tend to pull in a fresh charge over the spark plug. Important. Get that right. That's power. Oh and by the way, you will have to space the spark plug so that the edge of the, the body comes flush with this here and it's best in case I forget to remember it to use an extended nose plug as this will put the spark more in the middle of a combustible mixture. And here's what the finished chamber and ports look like. Earlier on I posed the question as to how much we could take off the head. I had responses up to a hundred thousandths appear to be safe. So being as this is a research project what I did was I took a hundred thousandths off on the quench side of the head but a hundred and twenty-five to a hundred and thirty on the spark plug side. That involved angle milling it about a degree. Now when Charlie cuts up the head we'll see if that's successful. If not we know a flat mill of a hundred is practical. As far as chamber volume is concerned this resulted in a 56 cc chamber. Given that we're going to have a flat top piston which comes 10 thou out of the top of the bore and has valve cutouts amounting to 6 cc this should result in a compression on our 318 at 20 over on the bore size of about 11.4 to 1. That is the maximum that we can expect. A more realistic one is probably around about 11.1.2 to 1. However, we're in a good position here as we're targeting 10.5 to 1 because this compression will suit both a restricted motor and an unrestricted one when it comes to carburation. Just as a reminder, what you are seeing here is a before and after of the combustion chamber. I don't think I can emphasize too much how important getting that compression ratio is. Let's just review that for a moment. The compression ratio is directly responsible for the torque output. If we're not filling those cylinders very well, the torque's going to be down by a bunch. It'll be down by the percentage of whatever manifold vacuum we see at wide open throttle. Now, we can compensate for that because the compression ratio directly increases torque. It is one of the main factors. There's basically two. The trapping efficiency and the compression pretty much dictate the torque. Not entirely, but pretty much so. We've got to improve the trapping efficiency by virtue of having better volumetric efficiency and we've got to raise that compression. So that is exactly what we're doing. Fail to do that, we will probably fail to make our goal. 
Now, before I wind up here, just a point to note, or several. Don't forget we're doing this project for St. Jude's. We need your help. Those kids really need your help. Remember, they've got their lives on the line here. Now, I want you just for a moment, think to yourself that unless somebody supports your doctor's efforts, then in a year you're going to die. Think about that subscription with that in mind. Now I'm going to sign off. Next episode will be on the exhaust port. Now we're homing in on what we're doing here. So let's have your support and I'll support my end of the bargain. So please subscribe, like, notify, put in a donation for our channel here and anything else that gets our circulation up so that we increase the audience that is going to be participating in our raffle. Remember, we're trying to raise $100,000 here. That doesn't happen by accident. It happens by pure design. I want you out there to make sure that you support these kids. With the last thought in mind, just imagine it's one of your kids in that hospital. So, subscribe. Just do it.